Hi guys, this time I will explain a lo tire longitudinal slip. Before uh, getting into the main topic, uh, we have to know the concept of effective rolling radius and uh, longitudinal wheel speed. As always, I prepare the quiz. What happened in the effective radius in braking and acceleration? If any changes in uh, radius, is it longer or shorter in braking mode? Uh, then I will explain the tire slip in acceleration and tire slip in braking. And finally, we end up with our conclusion. Uh, let's take a look at the concept of effective rolling radius and the wheel speed. Uh, let's call the free rolling angular velocity by omega sub zero, uh, loaded wheel radius by r sub l, effective wheel radius by r sub e, unloaded wheel radius by r sub u. Uh, when a car stops, tire is vertically loaded at the time. A vertical wheel radius to the road surface is R sub L, and the unloaded circumferential radius is R sub U here. When the car starts on straight and level road, the longitudinal speed of wheel center with sub X is neither omega sub 0 multiplied by R sub L nor omega sub 0 multiplied by R sub U. Not this one. A real longitudinal speed of tire center will be somewhere between omega sub 0 r sub u and omega sub 0 r sub l. Using the equation, a longitudinal speed of the wheel center is equal to free rolling angular velocity multiplied by free rolling radius. Uh, therefore, free rolling radius is equal to longitudinal speed of the wheel center divided by free rolling uh, angular velocity omega sub zero. The effective rolling radius will be calculated as with sub x divided by omega, as I said, as I said, r sub e can be expressed in terms of r sub u and r sub l, as shown as here. You can find the proof of this equation at this reference, or visit my visit my blog. Tire circumferential speed. Uh, shows down, uh, slows down uh, just before tire road surface contact patch. Here. Here. And become relatively stable for entire tire footprint in this area. And get faster and recover its speed right after departing from road surface. In this part. Let's look at some influence factors on effective rolling radius. Uh, they will be tire, tire structure, tire pressure, a tire tread pattern shape, a tire tread wear, tire temperature, and the road surface condition, reaction force, vehicle speed, brake force, and traction force. Here we have a quiz I prepared. At the which of the statement is right in the braking? Number one, the effective radius of a wheel increases. Number two, the effective radius of a wheel decreases. 
Number three, no change at all. Are you ready to hit the answer? Well, let's look into details case by case. Here we have the definition of a longitudinal slip lambda. Lambda is equal to the quantity of free rolling angular velocity omega sub zero minus actual angular velocity omega divided by free rolling angular velocity omega sub zero. Uh, when we multiply numerator and the denominator by the free rolling radius r sub e here, which is equal to this equation. Here, uh, v sub x is a linear velocity of a wheel center, which is equal to the free rolling radius r sub e times free rolling angular velocity omega sub zero here. Uh, we need the instant value of tire slip because it will be used as a very important parameter for ABS, anti-locking uh, brake system, requiring solid decision within very, very short time. So we use the velocity, which is the derivative of distance with respect to time, rather than distance itself. As shown as the equations above, every single term in the equation of a slip here a changes with the infinitesimal time interval delta t going by slip speed v sub ss of tire element with respect to the road surface can be described as follows. Uh, v sub ss is equal to a free rolling wheel speed minus free rolling radius times actual angular wheel velocity like this and then lambda can be expressed as v sub ss divided by v sub x now, there are some other names of lambda here longitudinal slip tangential slip circumferential slip book authors often use different forms of slip equation on their own preferences like this let's look at the longitudinal slip of free rolling wheel in the free rolling condition actual speed is equal to the speed by wheel effective radius in other words actual angular velocity omega is equal to free rolling angular velocity omega sub zero and that speed is equal to the speed of a car so in the slip equation this actual angular velocity omega is equal to omega zero here and vx is actually is r sub e multiplied by omega sub zero so uh, this term is equal to this term therefore slip is equal to zero longitudinal slip only happens in the braking or acceleration which is not in the free rolling let's move to the topic longitudinal slip during acceleration in the acceleration tire element is compressed in the tire road surface contact patch therefore tire element moves slower in the contact patch than in free rolling area in the acceleration let's call actual angular wheel velocity by omega a wheel rolling radius by r sub e effective rolling radius in acceleration by r sub acc 
actual circumferential speed of the wheel by uh, V sub ACC, then omega times R sub ACC, which is uh, V sub ACC, is less than omega times R sub E, uh, which means Radius in acceleration is less than free rolling radius. Effective rolling radius in acceleration gets smaller than the free rolling radius. Referring to the slip equation here, in the extreme case in which engine torque is big enough to overcome tire friction, wheel spin happens without any longitudinal movement of the wheel, then a V sub x is equal to zero, and that makes slip goes to minus infinity. Therefore, slip value lambda exists between zero and minus infinity if acceleration is greater than zero. This picture is the exaggerated shape of tire de deformation to help you understand the compression of tire element over tire road contact patch in acceleration. As I explained, tire <laughs> element is compressed in the tire road surface contact patch. As in this picture, D1 is greater than D2 here. D2 is greater than D3 and so on. Tire element experiences stretching in the interval D1. As a result, it has the largest arc length in the D1 interval. Stretching diminishes gradually according to the increment of interval number until D6. Then uh, from D7, compression starts and gradually grow until D14. Tire element enters its footprint region with minimized arc length and the maximum compression. In the tire footprint region, D14 uh, is the most compressed element. Then again, compressing is reduced gradually over D15 and D16 with a longitudinal slip. Uh, this graph is describing the longitudinal flexion coefficient mu sub x as a function of longitudinal slip lambda. A mu sub p is a peak friction coefficient which is similar to static friction coefficient. A mu sub k is the kinetic friction coefficient here. Attraction force uh, will be maximized at the peak friction coefficient here. If traction force is big enough to overcome the peak friction force, a wheel spin happens without the longitudinal movement of the wheel. In the braking, tire element is stretched in the tire road surface contact patch. Uh, therefore, tire element moves faster in the contact patch than in free rolling area in the braking. Uh, let's call actual angular wheel velocity by omega and the wheel rolling radius, a free rolling radius by R sub E and the effective rolling radius in acceleration by R sub break.
and the actual circumferential speed of the wheel by with a brake and then omega multiplied by also brake is is greater than omega multiplied by r sub e uh, which means the radius in brake is greater than a radi a free rolling radius effective radius gets bigger than unroaded radius in braking referring to the slip equation in the extreme case in which brake force is big enough to overcome tire friction, wheel slide happens with the wheel lock locked up. Then with the brake is equal to zero and slip value is equal to one. Uh, therefore, a slip value uh, will exist between zero and one. If acceleration uh, less than zero. Accelerated the shape of the tire deformation to help you understand the extension of a tire element over tire road surface contact patch. As I explained, in the braking, tire element is compressed in the tire road surface contact patch. D13 is less than D12. D12 is, is less than the 11 and so on. Tire element experiences the biggest compression in the in the interval D13 here. As a result, it has the smallest arc length in the D13 interval. Compression diminishes gradually according to the decrement of interval number or until D7 here. Then from this D6 extension extension starts and gradually grow until D16 here counterclockwise in this direction. A tire element enters is footprint region uh, with maximized arc length and the maximum extension. In the tire footprint region, D16 here is the most stretched element. Uh, then again, uh, stretching is reduced gradually over D15 and the half of half of D14. Uh, with longitudinal slip and compression starts again uh, with tire elements departing uh, from road surface here. Uh, this graph is describing the longitudinal friction coefficient as a function of longitudinal uh, slip lambda. Uh, mu sub p is a peak friction coefficient, which is similar to static friction coefficient, and the mu sub k is the kinetic friction coefficient. A braking force will be maximized at the peak friction coefficient here. If, if braking force is big enough to overcome the peak friction force, a wheel slide happens without Rotation of the wheel. It's not easy to get the hang of the reason why the radius in brake uh, gets bigger and radius in acceleration uh, gets smaller. Uh, let's investigate deeply why effective radius changes in braking and acceleration. In this picture, Thick red arrow is here. Effective radius in braking, and the thick blue arrow is the effective radius in acceleration. 
So the instant tangent center for breaking is here. The instantaneous center of acceleration is here. And as you see, the instantaneous center for free rolling is here. Let's get into the reason. Instantaneous center gets lower in braking along with the degree of a longitudinal slip. You can easily understand the reason if you think instantaneous center approaches infinity with the wheel locked up in heavy braking because all the elements of a sliding wheel move parallel parallel uh, to the road surface and that uh, makes in instantaneous center approach, approach infinity. Instantaneous center uh, gets higher along with the degree of longitudinal slip in acceleration. You can easily understand the reason if you think instantaneous center approaches, approaches uh, to wheel center in case of wheel spin in the big acceleration uh, well over the maximum friction force of tire. In that case, tire loses its traction force and just the spin itself uh, just spin itself. All the tire elements are rotating at the wheel center. This picture shows the uh, rigid wheel with the electric motor. The radius of the wheel is 0.5 meter. The picture shows the travel distance when it makes its one revolution, which means 360 degrees. If this wheel uh, makes its one revolution without longitudinal slip, it should stop at the location 2 here uh, with a travel distance 3.14 meter. Uh, but uh, in the case of a bigger traction force than friction force, the wheel experiences the wheel spin at the expense of a travel distance this much and the stops somewhere between origin and location 2 yeah. uh, this resultant travel distance is the same one uh, which is smaller wheel colored by red uh, makes by its one revolution without the longitudinal slip. Therefore, we can say that the effective rolling radius is reduced in, in the acceleration. We have reached the same conclusion for effective rolling radius decided by instantaneous, instantaneous center discussed previously. In the case of a bigger uh, braking force than friction force, the wheel experiences the wheel slide leading excessive travel distance and stops somewhere after overshooting the location to this area. Uh, this resultant travel distance is the same one uh, which bigger wheel blue color here Uh, makes by its one revolution without the longitudinal slip. Therefore, uh, we can say that the effective rolling radius is increased in the braking. Uh, we have reached the same conclusion uh, for effective rolling radius decided by instantaneous center discussed previously. Now, What's the answer to the quiz? Now I think that uh, you can get the hang of the reason 
why the radius in breaking gets bigger so what's the answer the answer is number one effective radius of wheel in braking increases here we have a conclusion a longitudinal slip is defined as velocity terms to get the instantaneous slip value every single term in the equation of a slip changes with the infinitesimal time interval delta t going by tire element is stretched in the braking and compressed in the acceleration in the tire footprint effective radius gets longer in braking and shorter in acceleration than in free rolling excessive engine torque causes wheel spin without longitudinal wheel movement excessive brake torque causes wheel slide with wheel locked up wheel spin and wheel slide should improve immediately because they cause the fatal safety problems I explained weight design in my first video. A car loses its tire grip of rear or front wheels at earlier time in the braking or acceleration, respectively, when the center of gravity is getting higher. In the second video, I explained why a car has a tendency to yaw motion in the braking. In this video, I explained the longitudinal slip and what happens in the tire footprint in the braking and acceleration. In the next video coming soon, I will explain a braking force distribution with the importance of center of gravity and weight distribution. Furthermore, I will explain the control logic of EBD, electronic braking force distribution. Goodbye guys, see you in next video.